What is up guys and in today's video I'm reviewing the M5 Yo and seeing if the tank is either broken or one of the best autoloaders at tier 9. Or is it just one of the weirdest looking tanks? I think we all know the answer to that one. Stock the tank is okay, but once fully maxed out you have two options for the guns, a two round magazine and a three round magazine. For the two rounder you get an aiming time of 4.5 seconds, it is not going to be the best at aiming. Same for the dispersion, it is not going to be that great sitting at 0.344. The damage per minute is not the greatest either, sitting just under 2,000 damage. The magazine reload time sucks, sitting at 25.71 seconds. You might be thinking to yourself right now, why would I use this gun? The stats look so bad so far. Hold on, the shell reload time is under 2 seconds. Penetration for the AP is sitting at 258, for the heat it is sitting at 352, and for the high explosive at 66. Damage for the AP is sitting at 450, for the heat 380, and for the high explosive 515. That is what makes the Yo so special, this gun right here. Because if you stop and think about it, in less than 2 seconds, you could shave off 900 to 1000 hit points of an enemy tank and get back into cover before they even know what hit them. The gun elevation is sitting at 18 degrees, so in certain situations, you can use it. For the gun depression, you have 8 degrees, so if you find yourself on a ridge line or a hill, you can work with it. Now for the 3 round magazine, the aiming time is sitting at 3.2 seconds and the dispersion is sitting at 0.335, so they did get a bit better. And the damage per minute is sitting at 2400, so you do get a bit more than the 2 round magazine. The magazine reload time is a lot better, sitting at 17.20 seconds. But the shell reload time is worse, sitting at 2.61 seconds. The penetration for the AP is sitting at 265. For the heat, it is sitting at 352. And for the HE, it is sitting at 58. The damage for the 3 rounder is sitting at 300 for the AP. For the heat, it is sitting at 240. And for the high explosive, at 400. The gun elevation and the gun depression for the 3 rounder is the same. The Yo has a decent amount of hit points, sitting at 2050. The armor for the turret on the front is 155 for the sides 110 and for the rear 70 armor for the hull is 170 at the front 60 on the sides and 55 in the rear we will look at the armor more in armor inspector later in the video so the view range on this tank is 282 so if you end up finding yourself in a situation where you have to spot for your team you could fill that role the concealment is not that good but that is to be expected from a large heavy tank the top speed of the yo is going to be 32 going forward 12 in reverse and for the average speed being 32. This is not going to be the fastest heavy tank on the battlefield, but it is quick enough to get you into position at the start of the battle, or if you need to reposition and support your teammates. The turret turn rate of the Yo is sitting at 24.30 degrees, with the hull turn rate sitting at 31.17 degrees. I personally have not found any trouble with the turn rates on the Yo. The terrain crossing capacity and the engine power look pretty decent for the Yo. I'm going to flash the consumables, the provisions, the ammunition for the two round magazine and the three round magazine and the equipment on the screen right now. You can use it as a template or copy it exactly, that is just how I personally like to use the Yo. As you can see the front turret of the Yo is very well armored. The only spot that the enemy will be able to pin you is this cupola. For the upper part of the hull it is decently armored, however some tanks will be able to pin you there and almost everyone will pin your lower plate right there. The side of the Yo, everyone is going to be able to pin you you're not really going to bounce anywhere unless they hit your turret right here or even this front part of the hall the same goes for the backside everybody will be able to pin you unless you get a lucky bounce in a hall down position they're not really going to be able to pin your turret too much unless they aim for the top part they might be able to get this part right here they will definitely pin the cupola if they end up hitting it but not many tanks will be able to pin the upper hall they will most likely have to load to their premium ammunition in order to pin speaking of which the yo will be able to pin most of the two tens you come up against however there are a few that you will struggle to penetrate i have three replays for you guys today in this first one you can see that i'm running the two round magazine against tier 10s and tier 9s in the second one i will be also running the two round magazine against tier 9s and tier 8s in the last one i will be running a three round magazine against tier 10s and tier 9s so you guys can see how effective the guns are in all three tiers I like the fact that they added two different guns on this tank. It offers two very different but very similar playstyles. The two round magazine offers more awful damage.
damage with three round magazine offers more DPM so you really get to choose which one you like to use more. I push my way over to base C and get two shots into the 60 TP and immediately get back into cover because of this long reload. The yo is heavily team reliant especially once you get those two shots off you have to rely on the team to support you until you could get fully reloaded and dish out more damage. That's what I am doing right now. I'm pulling back and waiting for my team to push up and support me and get shots on the enemy. And also, in the meantime of me reloading, I'm keeping my eyes on the minimap and where the enemy positions are. I pull back out into the open, focusing the 60 TP. I get one shot into him. My teammates lower him down to a one shot, and I ricochet off his hull. That is a feel bad moment. The grill or the waffle tractor end up bouncing off of my turret, and the other one manages to get a shot into me. So I decide to pull back out of the line of sight until I am fully reloaded reloaded. I look around the battlefield and I see half the enemy team pushing the hill by base A. Since I am almost reloaded, I'm trying to see if I could get any shots on the enemy team pushing our mediums. It does not look like I could get any shots off on the enemy team over there and it looks like we are going to lose that hill so I decided to go ahead and help my team start pushing this flank. Our team managed to take out that 60 TP and they are focusing the tortoise now so I decided to push in and see if I could get any shots into him. We managed to get one shot in and as soon as I'm about to fire off my second shot they take him out sending him back to the garage. It does not look like the battle for the hill over by base A went well so I decided to start pushing there and try to support our medium tanks. Our STB1 is capping out base B and it looks like the T100 LT is about to get very screwed. So I pull over this little hill and try to help out our T100 by getting shots into that Progetto. We manage to get one shot into that Progetto, however we are not able to get the second shot off, but the IS-4 is rushing in so we snap a shot into him, tracking him in place, but the Progetto ended up taking out our T100. I pull back into cover and check my right flank real quick. It looks like the M103 is the only one pushing the right side and the rest of my team is camping Basie. I don't know why but they are for some reason. I am almost fully reloaded, so I decide to push up when the ML2 comes flying out of nowhere, does not try to hit me, he just goes right down into the river, and it looks like he's about to go into Bushka's office. I decide to push in there first and try to cut him off. When I push up, the IS-4 gets spotted, so I change targets, dump two shells into him, and back up to cover, lowering him down to a definite two shot for me. But now I have to worry about that ML2 pushing me since 9 out of 10 chances he has a full clip while I am stuck on this long reload. I can't do anything right now other than rely on my team. Our waffle tractor is still at base C but that is a good thing in this situation because if the enemy does push me he could get shots on them and our 60 TP is rolling up on the enemy also. So all I have to do is stay back and try to stay alive. The ML2 manages to get one shot into me however I am willing to trade with him since I know I will be able to clip him out of the game. We are sitting at 4100 damage right now. We are almost winning on cap points. The IS-4 is a two shot the Progetto is a definite one shot and the grill could easily be taken out so now it's just a rush to get as much damage as we can. The Progetto and the grill are by our Yag Panzer but the IS-4 is still over here and he is right there so I'm gonna go and try to clip him out real quick. Our teammates might be able to get a shot into the IS-4 lowering him down for us and there we go I think the Waffle Tractor lowered him down to a one shot we just have to aim in and take him out just like that. And we are literally about to win I cap points. We do not have much time left and I want to get as much damage as possible. So I'm going to go over and try to support our Yak Panzer and focus the grill. I go for the full reload and I switch to HE. All I have to do is aim in and land my shots. And hopefully he does not take out our Yag Panzer E100. All the Yag Panzer has to do is keep the grill exactly where he is and distract it. I am almost fully reloading. We are literally about to win our cap points. So I get one shot into him. Can I get the second one off? Yes, we just barely get it off before we went on the cap points. We did 5,267 damage that battle. And of course, we got the mastery. My shoulders do hurt a little bit from carrying this team. Usually on this map, I would push over to the hill between bases B and A. However, the Action X has that spot covered. So I decided to push over to this position and get some shots off on the enemy. And there's the ML2. I get two shots into him. And in less than like 40 to 50 seconds at the start of the battle, he lost over half his hit points. Don't be like this ML2. Do better. 
I decide to start pushing up with the Maotian since he is not spotted yet and has not taken any damage. Usually in that position he would have been spotted by a TD or whatever tank in that top corner of the map where someone is usually sitting. I decide to be a little risky here and push towards the hills by the enemy spawn. If I was spotted a bit sooner and the enemies were closer I would have gotten lit up right there. But as you can see almost the entire enemy team is spotted over by base C or near their spawn. I'd take this moment to see if I could get some shots in on the enemy over by base C to help our team out. I missed the first shot but got a pretty decent roll on that chimera with the second one. I was considering just staying here until I was fully reloaded but I decided to say screw it and start pushing forward. Usually I would recommend playing this tank as a support tank but as you will see in a second you can play this tank really aggressive and on the front line if you know what you are doing. Of course as I say that I get hit in the tracks by somebody camping in their spawn by that rock. I am willing to take that hit because I know I could easily take out this ML2 and get a very dangerous gun out of the game. What did I tell you? There's a SU-130 sitting over in their spawn and they get another shot into me. I tried to quickly switch to HE and snap a shot off, however I ended up whiffing that into the rock. Instead of pulling back into cover, I rush out into the open and put this rock between me and the SU and start focusing the object 252. The object 252 is starting to push us, we are almost fully reloaded so I'm just waiting for him to get close enough and there we go, he managed to nail shot right into his track and now I'm just waiting for him to push over this hill because my gun depression isn't really the greatest at 8 degrees and the object 252 is really well armored. But he does make the fatal mistake of pushing towards me and I get the second shot off. I'm making sure that I'm still behind that rock there so that SU-130 is not able to get shots into us. And I have to rely on my teammates over at base B and behind me in order to take out the object since I am on this long reload. I try to ram the object to take him out but he only did damage to me and I did absolutely no damage to him but luckily our Maotian came in and saved the day sending him back to the garage. I pulled forward and try to take out the SU-130 just to get another gun out of the game. I managed to give one shot off before the WZ was able to take out our Maotian. So now I decided to switch targets to the Chimera since he's right here. He's a definite one shot so I just switch to HE, splash him, and send him back to the garage. I start backing up because I am pretty useless at this point with this long reload and the SU tried to snap another shot into me but he ends up whiffing it. And the BC is rushing in to take out that SU-130 however he is going to take a nasty hit in return. The WZ is going to start rushing us. I honestly don't know what he is doing right here. He's just a free kill and damage at this point because look at this. Like what? What did he expect to happen? I end up getting both shots into the WZ, the first one tracking him in place and the second one as well. And the BC is going to ricochet his first shot but the second one is going to take him out sending him back to the garage. I start pushing out in the open but I stop to let the BC know that I will take the hits. Since I have a lot more hit points than he does and remember this is a support tank so I'm going to leave the BC behind or at least hope he stays behind supporting me in return as I take the hits. I start pushing forward when the T-54 is spotted. I am not fully reloaded so I start backing up and that was a good idea since the T-54E1 is over on that hill supporting that T-54. Just like how the BC is supporting me right now. I'm pulling back even more into cover behind this mound here so I can keep an eye on the T-54E1 and that mod 1. But the mod 1 pulled out, tried to snap a shot into me, it ricocheted off of my turret, made sure that the E1 was not aiming at me before I rushed in, and tried to snap a shot off on that mod 1. I don't know where that shot went, that is some BS if you ask me. I snap a shot into the E1 and start backing up because the mod 1 is flanking me and I get a nice bounce from both of them. And now I'm pushing out into the open to make myself a big target for both of them so my BC could get some shots in on that mod 1 which he does end up getting off. I'm waiting until I am almost fully reloaded before I start pushing the mod 1. I activate the engine power and start rushing in to snap off the two shots. He's a definite two shot and of course I ricochet off his front somehow. I try switching to HE and nailing him on the side but I did not feel comfortable of the HE penetrating so I switch to AP, snap a shot into him and our BC rushes in to finish him off. We are sitting at 5,100 damage dealt and 2,020 damage blocked and that E1 was still pretty healthy. 
He went to cap out base B, so I'm gonna rush in there and see how much more damage I could deal out. I have enough hit points to trade with him, so I get one shot into him, the BC gets another shot into him, and we manage to finish him off. We get 5,672 damage, the mastery badge, and we did carry the team again, but not without the help of the BC. If he was not supporting me, I would have easily gotten deleted at the end of the- Which do you think is better, the two round or the three round magazine? Let me know down in the comments below. I start pushing towards base A when the enemy heavy tank start getting spotted along with the E3. I decide to wait until the Kumpfpanzer 70 is now looking at me or until he fires off his round. I decide to push out into the open since he is now looking at me, snap two shots into him before he gets back into cover and I'm just waiting since I have one more shot and seeing if they will push forward and it looks like the E3 decides to do that and we get a shot into him before we pull back and wait for our reload. I start pulling back because there's really only me and the AMX 50B on my team holding base A. Yes, we have a TD over by base B, but he's not really getting any shots off on these heavy tanks and the E3 over here. I check how the battle is going over at base C, but it does not look like it's going too well for our team. I pull out, getting two shots into that M5 yo before he decides to pull back into cover. So I start looking for more targets and there's the Kumpfpanzer 70 again and we managed to get a shot into him and pull back before he could get a shot off. On us. I pull back and I'm just waiting to see what the enemy team is going to do if they decide to push me or if they're just going to stay exactly where they are and the whole re takes out the E3 so I decide to come out at another angle and surprise them from a different angle and I'm going to focus the enemy yo. He is not focusing me he is too focused on our AMX 50B. I get one shot into him but now he is looking at me and I'm willing to trade if I am able to get one more shot off but I do not have to trade. He did not even get one shot into me and he's lowered down to a one shot and our whole re takes out that Kumpf Panzer. 70. I turn my attention over to the left flank because my team over here could easily deal with the yo since he is one shot. Our left flank was all wiped out besides the waffle tractor and our ho re managed to take out that yo, but the yo takes him out in return. I'm trying to make it over to the left hand side as fast as I can to support our waffle tractor and keep him alive. When the 183 is spotted I try to see if I could snap a shot in but it does not look like it can so I just keep going on about my way to help out the waffle tractor and I make a little bit of a stupid play I just run out into the open and the Vickers light is able to snap a shot into me. I considered backing up, but I said, screw it. I'm going to keep going forward because if I go forward, the waffle tractor could support anyone who starts pushing me. And now I'm thinking since the Vickers is a two shot for me, I'm just going to keep going and see if I can clip him out. Of course, as I keep going on, he repositioned so he's not going to get spotted until he runs all the way over to the other side near our AMX 50B. And I'm thinking, okay, the 183 pushed over by our AMX 50B earlier, so I need to get over there and support him as fast as possible before he's taken out. I'm not going to lie, this scared me right here. Just going around the corner and the 183 being right there, I did not expect that. My Like, my butthole clenched up. You do not understand. Thankfully, he bounced me and I was able to get the entire clip into him, but now I need to back the hell up before he reloads and gets another chance to shoot me. Of course, T57 comes out of nowhere from behind me and starts unloading his clip into me. So now I got two enemies and the Vickers Light, if you look at the minimap, he is pushing in too. So now I got the entire enemy team pushing me. Thankfully, our waffle tractor takes out the 183 and I'm able to focus the T57 heavy. I lower him down to 15 HP. So now I have to rely on my team to take him out. Finally, the waffle tractor reloads and takes out that T57 heavy. And now I have to turn around quickly and focus the Vickers. But I am not quick enough and he ends up taking me out. Is the M5Yo broken? That is the question we are all thinking. Yes and no. I do not feel like the Yo is wildly overbroken or overpowered. However, I do believe it is a very strong heavy tank that it is almost broken. Sitting just on the edge of super strong and almost broken. Now let me ask you the question. Do you think the M5 Yo is broken, wildly overpowered, or just a very strong heavy tank at tier 9? Let me know.